Good morning, boys and girls. I hope you're having a good day. It was so fun to see a lot of you yesterday. I'm sad I missed some of you, but I'm thinking about you guys. I hope you're doing a good job. Today's actually a really fun lesson. This is one of my favorite lessons. It's poetry. We're going to weave in some poetry. Poetry is such a fun way to learn about our language, boys and girls, and practice our language. It can deepen your vocabulary, and it can also improve your ability to read. When you can read a poem, and you re read it over, and you read it over again, or maybe you take the poem, and you cut it into strips, and you put it back together like a puzzle. It's such a good way to develop what we call fluency. So I hope you have fun with this lesson. Uh, I'm taking a history class right now. It's about a different war. It's the Civil War. But I have to tell you, in that class, my teacher, my professor, has weaved in poetry as well. And again, it's one of my favorite parts. So to understand poetry, boys and girls, though, you there's some vocabulary words you have to understand. Now, these are just a few things that can be in a poem. There are several things that can, elements of poetry, there are one, two, three, four, five elements of poetry in this poem. But again, the list is long, and hopefully as you get older, you'll start learning more of the elements of poetry. So the first one is alliteration, and alliteration is the repetition of repeated sounds. So in the poem, you're going to hear a, a sentence that says, he raced with rabbits, raced, rabbits, er, that initial consonant sound. That is what we call alliteration, and you'll see poems use Poets use alliteration a lot, where they use the first sound and they repeat the first sound. The next term you need to understand is imagery. And it's almost like you can imagine what that means, right? The image. The writer uses words to paint a picture in your brain. The actual definition is words or phrases that appeal to your sense of sight, hearing, touch, taste, smell, and they create a mental image in your imagination. So you'll hear about when, ta when Washington was a little boy, and I want you to use your imagination, what it must have been like all the way until he served in the war. Repetition. You'll see that, that poets will repeat things, especially if it's an important element of the poem. The repeating sound, sometimes it repeats the sound or a word phrase over and over again. Rhyme scheme, this is a fun one, boys and girls. The rhyme scheme is the pattern of the poem. Now, we te learn poems A, B, A, B, but this poem actually has an A, A, B, B, A, C, C. So I'll teach you how to identify the rhyme scheme. And then also the rhythm, boys and girls. When, can you get a cadence? Can you get a rhythm as you read the poem? I'm going to read it today and show you the cadence. But it's a pattern of sound created by stressed or unstressed syllables. So you'll be able to see where we get that rhythm. First, I want to draw your attention, boys and girls, to a couple of words that we have to know before we read the poem. The first word is, sorry, a whippoorwill, a whippoorwill. Now, a whippoorwill is a kind of bird, makes a beautiful sound. If you can, today I want you to go Google it, find out, see if you can find the sound it makes. So I want you to know what a whippoorwill is. And then the bugles. A bugle is a horn. So those are two words that are important to know today in the vocabulary. Before we get to finding, we're going to find the alliteration, we're going to find the imagery, the repetition, the rhyme scheme, and the ryth rhythm, I'd like to read the poem first. And this poem, it's called George, or excuse me, Washington. It's by Nancy Bird Turner. Knowing the author of a poet is always important too. It is in the lesson. It says, he played by the river when he was young. He raced with rabbits along the hills. He fished for minnows and climbed and swung. And who did back get the whippoorwills? Strong and slender and tall he grew. And then one morning the bugles blew. Over the hills the summons came, over the river's shining rim. He said that the bugles called his name. He knew that his country needed him. And he answered, coming and marched away 
for many a night and many a day. Perhaps when the marches were hot and long, he'd think of the river flowing by or camping under the winter sky. Would hear the whippoorwill's far off song, boy or soldier in peace and strife, he loved America all his life. So boys and girls, last year, my class memorized this poem and we talked about it a lot in the class. So if memorizing this poem is something you're up for, that if you're up to that challenge, go for it. Let's find the elements of poetry in here. So the first one is the alliteration, that initial consonant sound. Well, here it is right here, boys and girls. He raced with rabbits. He raced with rabbits. Er, er. That's called alliteration. Our next one is imagery, boys and girl, boys and girls. And the imagery is when you hear the words bugles blue, can't you hear the bugles? So the blue bugles blue or listening to the whippoorwills. The whippoorwill has a beautiful, beautiful whistle. So that paints a picture. Also, marches were hot. You can just imagine George Washington wa marching off to war in the heat. So remember, this starts when he's a little boy and then he gets called to the battle. He gets called to be the commander in chief. And then at the end, he's dreaming back, but no matter what, whether he was a boy or a soldier, he loved America all his life. So read it a couple times through. As you read it, you'll really start to understand it. Our next one is repetition. There is repetition in here, boys and girls. So the repetition is the use of bugles. We see that a few times. And then one morning, the bugles blew. And then down here, we see it again, where he said, he said that the bugles called his name. So that use of bugles. So you can imagine that that sound was probably something that was very familiar to Washington. So the author, she, he also reused, he repeated whippoorwill. Whippoorwill, whippoorwill would hear the whippoorwill's far off song. A whippoorwill probably reminded him of his childhood when he was a little boy climbing and swinging in the hills. So that use of a whippoorwill again, there's that repetition in the poem. The next one, this is my favorite part about poetry. It's the rhyme scheme. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to label this and we're going to identify the rhyme schemes. We're going to start with each stanza. This poem is three stanzas long. So we're going to give a letter to every time a word rhymes. If the word changes and then it rhymes with another word, we'll give it a second letter. So we're gonna start with A. So it says, he played by the river when he was young. He raced with rabbits along the hills. He fished for minnows and climbed and swung. Right there, boys and girls, we have two A's. It's young, there's my A. Here's my A. Those two rhyme. Well, guess what though? Hills is going to be in there too. That's going to be our B pattern. He raced with rabbits along the hills. He fished for minnows and climbed and swung. He had hooted back at the whippoorwills. So that would be your B. So it's A, B, A, B. Now, I know a lot of you are thinking next is going to be A, but they're going to throw a little wrench into it. They're going to challenge you. The act, next one is actually C. I'm going to write the, the rhythm scheme, the rhyme scheme, excuse me, the rhyme scheme at the end. But strong and slender and tall he grew. And then one morning the bugles blew. Well, look at this, boys and girls. These are C. So now we have an a, B, A, B, C, C rhyme scheme. Over the hills the summons came, over the river's shining rim, he said that the bugles called his name. So now we have a D, we have no more words that rhyme, so we're gonna go ahead and do came and name. You're gonna, notice I match them, right? If it's the same letters, that means at the end they rhyme. So we have a A, A, B, B, C, C, D. Hint, hint, this is gonna be E. 
So now he, over the hills the summons came. He said that the bugles called his name. Those two rhyme. So then we have an E over the river's shining rim. He knew that his country needed him. So you can see a kind of a pattern emerging, a scheme emerging. And he answered, coming, and marched away for many a night and many a day. Oh, we've got two words that rhyme here, away and day. If you had to guess, what letter do you think I would kind of put there? A, B, C, D, E, F. So here's our rhyme scheme. We're gonna to switch to an F. Oop, I should've done that in black. F, F. So now we have, perhaps when the mar marches were hot and long, he think of the river flowing by or camping under the winter sky. Would hear the whippoorwill's far off song. This one's interesting because now we have a G. You're gonna and you're gonna match the line that rhymes a G. G. All right. So here we go. He think of the river flowing by or camping under the winter sky. So we have H, H. And then the last part of the poem. Boy or soldier in peace or strife, he loved America all his life. So here again, we've got strife and life. Oh, I should have identified this word and defined it for you. Strife, boy or soldier in peace or strife. Strife means struggle. It means hardship, boys and girls. Remember, Washington had a lot of hardship during the battles. So we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and their poem ends with I. So if I were to write out this rhyme scheme, if a teacher said write out the rhyme scheme, it would look like this. A, oops, I did use two colors. A, B, A, B, C, C, D, E, F, F, I should have done that a little different, that's okay. G, G, H, H, I, I. I don't know, those are always fun for me, boys and girls. I didn't make a pattern with the pens I tried, but it was too hard. So that's called a rhyme scheme. So sometimes teachers will say, what's the rhyme scheme of the poem? And then again, there's the rhythm, the cadence of the poem, so that when you say it, boys and girls, you can hear, you know, over the hills the summons came. There's a, a rhythm to saying it, so it makes it easy to say. He played by the river, and when we write, when we memorize it, I kind of snap, snap with it. He played by the river when he was young. He raced with rabbits along the hills. He fished for minnows and climbed and swung and hooted back at the whippoorwills. Strong and slender and tall he grew and then one morning the bugles blew. Over the hills the summons came over the river's shining rim. He said that the bugles called his name. He knew that his country needed him. And he answered, coming, and he marched away for many a night and many a day. Perhaps when the marches were hot and long, he'd think of the river flowing by or camping under the winter sky. Would hear the whippoorwill's far off song, boy or soldier in peace or strife, he loved America all his life. I hope you had fun with that, boys and girls. Today your assignment is I want you to read this poem a few times through. I want you to be able to read it. I want you to, if you can, identify the elements of poetry. Moms and dads, I put the definitions embedded in the lesson. Have fun with this. Again, fun things you can do with poems. You can draw a picture of this poem. You can, again, I think one of my favorite activities is to cut this 
this into strips and then have the scholar put it back together. You have your poetry journals now. A lot of you came and picked up your materials yesterday. Put this poem in your poetry journal. Our poetry journal, journal in my class was a little, there wasn't as much as I'd like, but we're gonna add some in from now until the end of our year. Have fun, boys and girls. Have a good day. See you later.